The new national security cutter. The NSC was designed from the keel up to meet all of the Coast Guard's maritime security missions. She's basically going to take those missions and be able to do, do those missions more effectively and more efficiently. The intent currently is to build eight of these cutters to replace 12 existing 378 foot cutters, doing the same mission set plus what the future holds. The Coast Guard Cutter Bertoff, named for the first Commandant of the Coast Guard, is the very first NSC and the first new cutter designed in over 20 years. 418 feet long with a 54-foot beam, she's part of the Legends class of national security cutters, the largest and most technically advanced class of cutter in the Coast Guard. With an increased range of 12,000 nautical miles and endurance for 60 to 90 day patrol cycles, she travels at a sustained speed of 28 knots. 378s sail with over 150 personnel and the, the Cutter Bertoff will sail with approximately 40% less people, just over 100. And she has the capability to take up to 148 people depending on what the mission is. With the additional berthing on the ship, we can carry a helo detachment, which is normally five people. Any other Coast Guard asset, they would have to double up and berth with other crew members. On this ship, they'll actually be able to have their own staterooms assigned to them, both for the uh, helo detachment or a law enforcement detachment if they deploy. Northrop Grumman Shipbuilding is leading the production effort along with Lockheed Martin. The cutters are being manufactured in Pascagoula, Mississippi. The Bertoff is almost ready to be turned over to the Coast Guard. The Weishi, the second NSC, is in construction, and the third is almost ready to start production. The Coast Guard had the concept for uh, the design. They wanted a new fleet of cutters to replace their aging fleet, and we started up in Washington interviewing the Coast Guard, the crews, and said, what do you need in the future to take these ships to sea? As a result of that, one of the biggest things was habitability, messing, berthing, survivability for the ship, and we designed those into the ship from the start. One of the big things on board this ship is the largest number of berthing in one compartment is six. So the worst case coming on here as a new seaman or, or a fireman on board the, in the Coast Guard, you'll be in no worse than a six person berthing area, which is very nice. Also, she has a large gym area, which is very important to our success out there being out underway for two to three months at a time. Each of the staterooms, mess deck, lounges, and a number of area mission areas and workshops all have land drops, which that allows the crew to use their either tablets or PCs to reach back into the network and get the information that is needed to carry out their job, tech manuals, and in navigation information. And now we're on the 01 level. Uh, this is where the uh, ship's office is, and the senior officers have their staterooms. Up here we have the commanding officer, executive officer, operations officer, and engineering officer stateroom. This is the uh, commanding officer's uh, cabin. This will be uh, virtually finished right now. The only thing left will be the carpet that will be installed after we come back off acceptance trials. In addition to birthing areas that support mixed gender crew configurations and enhance quality of life considerations, including a physical fitness center, crew lounges, training and study areas, the galley, mess facilities, wardroom and lounge have all been designed for comfort and efficiency, including conveniently located stores and a stores handling elevator. This single deck elevator that will take a pallet from the flight deck after you did uh, vertical replenishment at sea down to here break it out into this six foot wide corridor and take it to the breakout areas. You have a freezer here, that's a combination freezer refrigerator, can be programmed to be either one, and just past it is the refrigerator on the uh, left. One of the key lessons of 9-11 was the need for improved interagency intercommunication. The NSC has state-of-the-art C4 ISR equipment. These systems offer increased situational awareness and enhanced interoperability between the Coast Guard and other agencies including NATO, the Navy, and DHS. One of the uh, really innovative ideas on board the Cutter Bertoff are the electronic systems on board. Uh, we are able to reduce the manning, particularly in the watch standing sections, with advanced navigation and electronic suite 
that monitor all the systems on board the ship. We should be able to, to use fewer people to carry out the same watch standing capabilities of our current fleet. The six consoles themselves are set up to have a Windows application workspace and a Solaris workspace. Those workspaces are linked back into the C2 network so that based on user name and or mission function, the operator at that one station has the capability to see everything that each other operator has. What that does is that makes sure that each person is seeing the same data. This is the bridge. What we have up here is the uh, integrated bridge system. I apologize, everything's covered up right now while we're doing the final installation, final painting. Uh, keep the windows covered to the last minute to protect them from any uh, debris and damage while we're painting. Two bridge consoles, steering control console, integrated uh, chart table, and GM DSS console. Up here, all the cables are under the false deck so that they're out of the way. We're getting ready. We finished pulling all the cables. Now it's a matter of putting the false decks down, grooming uh, out the systems, and being finished. Advanced sensors for real-time tracking, intelligence collection and sharing, a seamless common operational picture. The NSC's C4 ISR system is critically important to the Coast Guard's post 9-11 mission. It enables the crew to see vessels in distress or targets of interest, easily collaborate with other Coast Guard assets either at sea, in the air, and ashore, and then take action on the most current and pertinent information available. The interoperability provided by the C4 ISR system also helps the cutter work cohesively with over 100 different agencies and organizations to achieve the highest homeland security. With the electronics capabilities, we have a lot of different circuits that other military organizations use and are synchronized with this system. So we can work with a battle group, for example, with the Navy more effectively than our current fleet, but we can also work with our NATO allies um, well, more successfully in the future. The cutter has a stern launch and recovery area for two rigid hull inflatable boats, either long range interceptors and or short range prosecutors. The new long range interceptor is approximately 35 feet long and it's approximately 12 tons in, uh, in size. We can put a large boarding team on there inside a cabin heated and cooled and they can go off the ship over the horizon capability which means she can go uh, 12 miles plus in front of the vessel. Stern launcher recovery was designed again. It's a, it's a new design, first in its class in the United States. Uh, it's a stern ramp. The small boats will come up the ramp, hit a net, which will automatically capture it. Hydraulic winches will bring it in, bring it into position. Then they'll have winches above that'll lift it up and put it into one of the storage positions. We'll carry three boats total, two uh, in the stern and one on Davit on the starboard side. The cutter also boasts an expansive flight deck able to accommodate a range of aircraft. We increased the size of it so that it could actually land the Jayhawk helicopter. It's capable of landing all of the Coast Guard helicopters and most NATO and civilian helicopters. It's also been designed with a assist system which will automatically capture the helicopter when it lands on the deck and then traverse it into one of the two hangars on the flight deck. None of the previous Coast Guard cutters have a helo control station where all the automation is. The guy sitting in there can actually talk to the helicopters, talk to the CO, the XO of the ship, make sure the ship's on the right heading, uh, talk the guy down, control all the lights for the landing, and he's able to, at the same time, if there is an incident, man the mo fire monitors and quickly put out the fire if there is a crash on the deck. In addition to being able to carry the two helicopters, not just stored in the hangar, they can do full maintenance on these helicopters while they're deployed with the ship. We can carry all their uh, spare parts, all the supplies, and they can, if they need to do maintenance, we actually have an aviation shop where they can do the maintenance. Another innovative enhancement is a rescue access station. If you're familiar with a cruise ship, they have an access door on the side of the ship which will open and lock in position two to three feet off the water. Then the tenders can come in and take you to shore. We put one of those on the starboard side of this ship. It'll allow non-standard boats to come alongside or you can take personnel directly out of the water if you're in a hazardous situation where you need to do it immediately. No climbing of the cargo nets, 
or having to put all the boats in the water to get the people out of the water quickly. They don't like to have uh, migrants going through the interior of the ship, so this passageway was designed to allow them to take move personnel from the stern to the bow without going through the interior of the ship. Powered by a combined diesel and gas turbine power propulsion plant driving twin screws, redundancy is designed so the NSC can be controlled from multiple areas. If we had an incident or damage in the engineering control room, damage control room, we can actually monitor and operate the engines or the propulsion systems from 13 other locations on the ship. Also, the same goes, we can monitor from the bridge, from the operations center, uh, damage control areas with just uh, laptops and the right permissions. Automated weapon systems, improved armament, and a self-defense capability including a medium caliber 57 millimeter deck gun. Detection and defense against chemical, biological, or radiological attacks, and four firefighting systems all protect the cutter from potential threats. This is a 57 millimeter gun, Bofors gun, uh, capable of firing 200 rounds a minute. Up above there you see the pilot house on the 03 level with the bridge wings. Above that the uh, mast with all the sensors. The new national security cutter, the flagship of the Coast Guard's 21st century fleet.